Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,988. This week we continue celebrating the Concord in the Hills that takes place on Saturday, February 12th in beautiful Fountain Hills, Arizona. With over a thousand cars, this is the first event for the new year that you don't want to miss. Learn more, go to concordinthehills.org. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm back in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona with a very special guest by the name of Jason Plotke. Jason, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear and are you ready to release the clutch? Hi, Mark. Good morning. Yes, I am. Let's have some fun. Yeah, well, you're definitely always ready to release a clutch with what, what you're doing these days. Now, before I give you a proper introduction and we dive into your world and we talk about the Concord and the Hills, what's one little thing that maybe most people don't know about you? I wish... I think that I have a like a long tenor in racing, and I wish I didn't, but unfortunately I don't. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, based on my uh, career path and some of the things I'm doing lately, but unfortunately uh, my racing career has been short-lived. Well, you know what? The, the main point here is you're out there having fun, and that's what it's all about uh, is getting out on the track and having fun. And that's something that you and your business partners do there for people in Scottsdale, beautiful facility. Let me give you a, a proper introduction, and we'll have some fun here. Jason Plotke is the co-founder and president of Private Motorsports Group, which owns and operates Apex Motor Club, a private car club in Maricopa, Arizona, that provides unique track and social environment for the automotive enthusiast. The track was designed by an award-winning racetrack designers from Motorsports Service International and features multiple configurations on over 200 acres in a beautiful mountain setting. In addition to the track, their private garages and a venue for social and event gatherings, Jason is an innovator and leader through entrepreneurship and has founded several high-profile companies throughout his career, including Echo Automotive, SMA and Innovative Automotive Group, of course, where he's having fun these days. Apex has been a sponsor of Concord in the Hills since the very beginning. We'll be back in just a moment, but first, a word from our valued sponsors. So give them a little listen. Keep your seatbelts tight. We're at Apex. We'll be right back. Covercraft's newest three-layer all-climate cover is especially engineered for moderate weather conditions, and it's treated with an extra UV-resistant formula. It's soft, it's breathable, and it's easy to store, all while pampering your paint, providing maximum UV rain and dust protection. If you live where it's windy, no worries. Simply add their gust guards for windy conditions to add extra protection to keep your cover in place. Your three-layer all-climate cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form and fit with the quality and attention to detail that's been their tradition since 1965. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft, too. Every one of my vehicles is protected with a Covercraft cover. And I have a deal for you. Use the code yeah 21 Y-E-A-H-2-1 at Covercraft.com, and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order plus free shipping. That's right. So get 10% off with free shipping by simply using the code YA21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was tired of my rates for my collector car insurance going up every year for no explainable reason. My carrier seemed to be turning into a media company versus an insurance company, and I realized that a portion of my policy premium was paying for all those so-called free media goodies. So I did my homework, I talked to knowledgeable collectors, shopped around, and discovered American Collectors Insurance. They've been serving the collector car hobby since 1976. You last that long by properly serving your customers' insurance need, not with a lot of fluff. ACI is ranked the number one 
online collector car insurance provider, according to Google, Trustpilot, Facebook, and they offer their real person guarantee live support. No never ending phone loops when you need help. Plus, because you don't use your classic car as a daily driver, you could save up to 40% compared to regular auto insurance. American Collectors Insurance provides agreed value policies. So if you experience a total loss to your collector vehicle or it's stolen, you'll be paid the amount listed on your declaration page, less any deductibles, of course. No ifs, ands, or buts. Give them a call today and ask for your free quote at 866-A-C-I-Y-E-A-H. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Greens, at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. So, Jason, let's uh, dive a little deeper into the corner, something I know you love to do, and talk a little bit about Apex Motor Club. But before I have you go there, I want you to give us a little recap of some very, very successful businesses that you've put together and, and built up. Innovative Auto Group, I mentioned, Echo Automotive and SMA. You have a long history in the automotive world, don't you? I actually do. I, you know, I'm, I sort of got bit by the car bug at a very early age. And I'm an automotive aficionado at its worst or best, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I sort of followed that passion at a very young age through college and started a business actually in college that grew into, coincidentally, a tier one supplier to General Motors. I was in my mid to late twenties. Wow. And we were, we had an office in Detroit and we were helping General Motors launch the Hummer brand when they bought the marketing rights from AM General for it. So no it was a lot of fun. I, yeah, I was, I'm first name friend basis with a lot of the top GM designers that we ended up meeting. I still stay in touch with them today. And it was, it was a really neat era for me personally. Um, just as a car guy, I was, we had an office in Detroit. We had, we sold, eventually sold directly to a GM plant. So I would go down to these, in fact, it was one of the newest plants at the time. And we, you know, as a, as a car guy going into an automotive plant is just unbelievable. I would go there once a month and we had an office in Detroit and we would meet with engineers and go to the GM design studio multiple, multiple times and see some of the, the future and, and, and even some of the past that uh, exists in those, those uh, facilities. And it was really a really fun time. You must know maybe Jim Taylor. Don't know Jim Taylor. Well, he was. He I was, know the name, but I don't. Yeah, he was yep. CEO of Hummer and president of Cadillac uh, for mm -hmm. GM. So he was there when Hummer started and when yep. sadly it kind of ended. He was a guest actually not too long ago, just a few weeks ago. He started a new company elms which is electric last mile solution so sounds like he's he's a bit like you a guy that just can't get away from the automotive sector but that's incredible you did that at such a, a young age and then you moved on and kind of did it again with a different kind of company with echo automotive yeah echo automotive was really neat it was designed basically in an early turn of 2010 we wanted to create a solution for fleet vehicles that was economical. So while there was lots of battery electric vehicle technology emerging at the time, Tesla had not even really hit the market yet. Our innovation was to provide a plug-in hybrid conversion system for commercial for existing commercial fleet vehicles and do some do it with in a in a financially responsible manner. So you could load a vehicle with tons of batteries, but if it cost fifty grand, who the fleets didn't care. They wanted <laughs> right. to save money as much as they want to save fuel. They really want to save money. Yeah. If they get to save fuel in the process, then that's a win-win. And we developed an award-winning system. We beat the likes of General Motors and International and Cummins, who had been working hard on. Fleet derives solutions to, to keep these very uh, archaic fleet vehicles that are on the market at, at the time um, on the road and driving. It was a really neat product. We won multiple awards, uh, like I mentioned, and certain uh, a tremendous amount of accolades for this technology. Unfortunately, it didn't make it to market. But our customers, we you know we had purchase orders from FedEx and and UPS and yeah. and a lot of the big large fleets around the country, and it was a really really neat project that we worked on we most people don't know this 
But the Silicon Valley of EV is Indianapolis, Indiana. And really? it was where the GM EV1 was derived out mm-hmm. of, a little warehouse just outside of downtown Indianapolis. Yeah. The Remy Brothers, the electrification of the automobile over its, over its history has really centered around Indiana and Indianapolis. And we had a facility there and, and hired some of the smartest people in the country. And it was a really, it was a really neat time as well. And, yeah. and what we, we really did some things that people didn't think was possible. It sounds like it. It sounds like you're almost a little bit ahead of your time. Yeah, I think it, I think it was. There was a lot of market. Uh, we really were on the leading edge of that. And when you're trying to get people not only to adopt an entire philosophy, but also your product, it's a it's a tough way to make a make a living. And, no kidding. And even though our our product spoke for itself, it was just it was a little premature. I think to your point. Well, sounds tremendous. And of course, SMA, which my understanding was an accessory manufacturer, a tier one supplier for GM. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and we used a lot of those relationships and a lot of my experience. You know, I started out uh, studying mechanical engineering at Arizona State University and ended up hiring in my career. I probably hired more mechanical engineers than I ever met <laughs> studying engineering. So it was really neat. It was fun. And that was, I, I, it's, you know, my practical background lends very well for those industries and those businesses. So I was, I was, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Well, my hats off to you. Incredible successes and, and fascinating Thank you. backstory. You're welcome. And, and that leads us up to uh, this new venture, uh, newest venture, I should say, uh, with what you're doing now. And of course, Apex Motor Club. So tell our listeners more about Apex. So Apex is a private motorsports country club. So no different than a golf course, except we have a road course, right? And it's the idea is that you can pay a membership fee and have access to a racetrack at your convenience. And that is a pretty cool thing. It's yep. a, that's a phenomenon that started probably 10, 15 years ago in the United States. And there's a number of them opening up. We just happen to put one in a really great market, you know, fifth largest uh, population in the United States, really a 12 month season mark, you know, lots of great weather for enjoying a race car and a racetrack at your convenience. And so the other thing, too, is it's what's neat about it is proximity, right? If you wanted to go to a racetrack and you told me you had a background in, in racing yourself, usually that entailed three, four hours worth of driving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Waiting around a lot. And we remove all that. We're 30. We're less than 35 minutes from the Phoenix International Airport. And we give more track time than you can. You can shake a stick at. I mean, you're going to you're leave. Listen, it's rare. As you know this, to leave a racetrack with track time, and our members do it every day, which is great. Yeah. That oh, means yeah. we're, give, given, we're fulfilling our uh, commitment to them. So it's really a lot of fun. The, a club anytime is all about its members, and we probably have some of the best members, people that I've, from all walks of life, that I'm inspired to be around. And in some cases, it's rare. So it's really cool. You do. I know some of those folks. Some of them have been guests here on Cars Yeah, and everything I hear about Apex is is stellar and of course uh this month being barrett jackson uh, auction month and all the other activities that happen this is an awesome time to get away but it's fantastic i'll put a link to apex motor club on the show notes page here for jason but of course we've got to talk about concord in the hills because peter volney connected me with you peter's been well an alumni here he's a two-timer now Call Peter a two timer. Wow. That might not be right, but he is a two timer. <laughs> two time and <laughs> Peter, he's going to laugh at that. But definitely a two time guest here. He was an early guest on Cars Yeah, and he's come back here as, of course, I'm promoting the Concord in the Hills this entire week with some spectacular people. I'd love for you to talk about your guys' involvement with this event. I know you've been a sponsor since pretty much the start and what that means to you. Yeah. So what Peter's created, first of all, it's an impressive show. In Arizona, we have a car culture and that I think one of the best kept secrets in the, in the country. Um, some of the most fascinating vehicles exist in Arizona. Obviously the weather is, is, is keen for that. But what Peter has done is taken that, that, uh, automotive culture and put it in a setting that's not only, uh, really enjoyable and, and fun in Fountain Hills, Arizona with the fountain and around the lake and it's a sprawling layout, but He's got great cars, great people. He gets, it's the highest attended car show in Arizona and it's got to be one of the top ones in the country. And he does it all for charity. I mean, it, he's yeah. not getting paid to do it. He does it for fun. And that's really, that's really inspiring. And we've been a part of it since it's almost its inception. And 
And we just, not only are we sponsors, but we enjoy being out there as car guys ourselves. So it's a lot of fun. You know, they're, they're in their, this will be their eighth show. Um, usually it's held every February. They've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars annually for Phoenix Children's Hospital. And that is really impressive. They have cars of all different makes and models, features, um, including some military aircraft, which is just a lot of fun. And it's free to spectators, which is cool. Well, that is incredible. I mean, free free parking, free to spectators, which is incredible. I know the 2020 show, they had over a 1,000 cars, five helicopters. They, they expected they had about 30,000 people, 118 vendors. They raised $260,000 for Phoenix Children's. And I just spoke to Peter this morning, and as of today... They've raised over $350,000 for this show. They've raised over $1.2 million since their first show for charity and uh, with almost $900,000 for Phoenix Children's Hospital. Absolutely incredible what they're doing, you and Peter and, and everybody involved. Yeah, it's one of those shows that's a great getaway. And for somebody like me who lives up here, we're dumping rain again. <laughs> it's a, a nice escape uh, to some nice warmth. You were saying this weekend, uh, Arizona is going to be a balmy 70. Uh, I'm a little jealous, Jason. Sorry. Hey, listen, <laughs> we have no shortage of sunshine in, in Phoenix. So it is the desert. So that's supposed to, it's it supposed, is the desert. It's supposed to happen there. Is, yep. Absolutely. And it, you know, the weather in February is great. So Peter's show is always a, a beneficiary of that terrific weather. It really is. And what's really cool is, uh, th- now you've got a group of cars that, um, I guess yesterday talked about being in charge of the race cars. And since you are all about going fast at Apex Motor Club, some race cars are going to be there this year. And they've been there in the past, but some pretty special cool cars. And of course, tomorrow's guest is Derek Daly. Uh, he's done a few racetrack laps in his time. I know he's a good friend of yours. So what does that mean for you to, to be able to walk on the lawn and see some spectacular historic race cars? It's really, really, you know, it's, a, it's those are pinch me moments, Mark, and I enjoy them. Whether it's at a car show or out at our track, we see um, sometimes I tell people it's the Smithsonian of automotive history <laughs> yeah. and racing history. I mean, we had we have a member that has um, the Ford GT that raced in Le Mans 1075 that oh. was out at the track two months ago with the largest Ford GT gathering in the country um, with almost 90 vehicles on the track. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, and some of these Ford GT guys, these guys are buying new Ford GTs, the, 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 the 06 and 05 and 06 car, uh-huh. and they've never seen 1075, right? And so this car is automotive legendary history. It won Le Mans in 68 and 69. It was the, it was the Gen 2 of the Ford GT program, or the Ford GT40 program. And it, it's just unbelievable. And, and at, to your point, you know, the last time I saw Derek, we were actually, he was driving me around our track in a brand new Ferrari F8 Tributo uh, at full speed. So that was kind of fun too. And yeah, I was sitting right seat with, with, with a legend, right? I mean, yeah. Formula One, IndyCar, all the accolades that that uh, Mr. Daly has achieved is incredible. So I have these pinch me moments, whether it's cars or drivers or whatever. And the racetrack was a was a conduit for a lot of that. And I, I, I can't tell you. My father told me at a very young age, never try to turn your hobby into a business. And I've been trying to prove him wrong ever since. So. <laughs> well, you know, I was just going to say that. And it sounds like you pulled this off pretty nicely. But timing is everything. Location, in the case of real estate, is everything. And you've combined those two things. And we're in a time period now when you look at what's happening with the collector car market and the money that's flying around out there. I mean, there's a lot of people that are in it and have been in it. And young people that are getting in it as well and starting to realize that this is pretty cool. And I think about places like yours, you know, we hear about the EVs coming on and all saying, oh, someday there's going to be autonomous and there's no more gas. And I kind of think of these collectible race cars and classic cars as becoming what horses became. I mean, horses didn't really go away when the car came around. They were just used in a different way. If I could look way into the future, I kind of think places like Apex are going to be where you go to have fun with your old gas powered car. Yeah, Mark, I don't think you're wrong. I mean, it's, you know, it sounds, sounds a little crazy today, but crazy today, maybe but not. It, as, as the world has changes at a rapid pace, as we know, 12 years ago, your cell, you know, the phone that you keep in your pocket was not the same thing it is today, right? And that's, so it's, it's pretty impressive. And I think to your point, those cars will have a special place in history. The car 
emits a sort of emotion. That's why there's such a culture around the automobile and has been for you know over a hundred years. And we're just a a release of that of that hobby and that passion. And and whether you're out there racing or just coming out to hang out with like-minded automotive folks, the sound and smells of the automotive internal combustion engine, I think, are not going away anytime soon. And and you know, I think automakers still as cars become autonomous and you're not going to, apparently we're not going to drive them at some point. I don't know if that's all true, but that's what somebody's working on. Right. And I think they're trying really hard to keep you behind the wheel and keep that a driving experience. I think we're in the, the, the greatest era of automotive product that's ever existed, even better than the sixties um, with the way the performance is and the, you know, and you've got these multiple powertrain systems that combine battery electronic technology with internal combustion and then there's just pure ev and and the pure ev stuff is nothing to sh- you know it's it's impressive too when porsche brings out a an electric car it's a porsche and it's it's pretty impressive so the the future is exciting i think what's neat about it is we don't know where it's going to go but i can tell you i i feel like the stuff that's been around this and, and the legendary automotive product is not going anywhere Well, I sure hope not. And uh, I was watching the movie the other day, I, Robot, that old movie, and where he was driving a vehicle that was driving him. And then he's like, you know, kind of screw this. I'm going to drive myself, Uh, you know, go into my mode and the steering wheel comes out and he's actually driving. But I was kind of thinking about the future there. And that's the great thing about these Concours events is they expose these classic vehicles to young people that have perhaps never been around them. Mm -hmm. And they can see them and get excited about them and get involved and be a part of it. So, uh, yeah, I don't think any of this passion is going to go anywhere, despite what maybe some want us to be. Uh, we will be what we want to be. Is there a, a, a driving, what I call a driving inspiration or a very influential person that's been in your life that's been of great help, a mentor of some kind, perhaps? You know, I, I can't pin down one. I, I've been fortunate at a very young age due to my uh, my hobby and my passion to meet a number of race car drivers. Um, like I said, when you asked me at the beginning of the show, what was one thing people didn't know about me is I always aspired to be a race car driver. So I was really enamored by these types of people. And in my early 20s, I met Paul Tracy. I met Ari Leyendyke. I met Mark Blundell. Um, and I would hang out with these guys. And I was really... It, it unfortunately it didn't drive me into racing which probably was for the best because i wouldn't have been that good but it was i was really i was really impressed in fact some of those guys um paul tracy ari Leindyke, i've been friends with for over 25 years nice. and i would consider them very good friends and i was always enamored by their ability to do what they did uh, especially in IndyCar, especially Indy 500. You know, Ari, I, was, I went to a dinner when I was in my early 20s and Ari was talking to Mark Blundell about running Le Mans. And it was just back when the Mulsanne Strait was a mile long. And he said he would get bored at 250 <laughs> miles an hour. And I was just sitting there as this yeah. young whippersnapper going, oh my, like my mind is blowing. I'm trying to hold it all together yeah. at a casual dinner. And these guys are talking like, you know, it's no big thing. And I, I was just blown away. And so, um, not any, not one necessary person. I'm, I'm just a big fan of racing. I love the hobby. I, you know, I, the reason I did Apex is because if you, if you're, especially in Arizona, right, you've been here. Yep. Um, if you're a golfer, you drive past three golf courses to get to yours. And I couldn't understand <laughs> if you're, if you're into the racing hobby, it was like hours of driving or getting on an airplane. And so being able to go commoditize the motorsport hobby in a manner that allows you to go track for a couple hours, which you and I know is a long time, yeah. and then actually go play golf in the afternoon was really <laughs> a lot of fun. So. Yeah, no kidding. Well, Ari and Ari Jr. have both been guests here, so now you're part of that Cars yeah alumni with those two great uh, drivers. Wow. And of course, Derek's going to be on tomorrow, Derek Daly, so it'll be fun. I've interviewed hundreds of race car drivers, F1, Indy cars, all sorts of cool people. Um, yeah, a very interesting group. Y- you talked about driving the Molson straight. I had um, Vic Elford, quick Vic, on the show years ago oh, yeah. i actually met oh, him wow. met him a long time ago i was invited to a porsche driving experience when i was living in san diego and they had these people from porsche that w- they would assign to you for the day to drive all their new cars i got assigned vic elford i couldn't believe 
my luck. And to sit next oh, to that guy all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. yeah. And I was, See, in my, the I was in my 20s. So, you know, it was like, oh, my gosh, this is. I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> yeah. He talked about driving, you know, Porsche 917s down that straightaway, 240 plus miles an hour. And he said something interesting. He said, you know, I was going by, there's a little cafe. I think he said it was on the left. And there was a woman there sitting in red drinking a coffee. And every time you go by, you catch a glimpse of her, kind of a freeze frame, like when you're on a train or something. Unbelievable. Yeah. And he said, after a few laps, all of a sudden, she was gone. He said, I was kind of sad that she was gone. I'm thinking, wait a minute. (laughs) You're driving. (laughs) And you're noticing a gal in red to the left. And a 917 Porsche, too, by the way. I know. know, know. A beast. Yeah. A beast. Beast. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. That's unbelievable. It it was an incredible story. Yeah, let's take a break and uh, thank our sponsors. We come back. We'll talk a little bit more about the Concord and the Hills, so sit tight. You listeners know I've been into car care my entire life. I am so excited to team up with AutoGeek in 2022. AutoGeek.net has been a leading source of auto detailing products, accessories, and expert knowledge for more than 20 years. What started in 1997 as a mail order catalog company has grown into a multi-website based e-commerce store that they are today. With a large online presence on its own website featuring close to 100 different brands, AutoGeek has grown to be the largest car care retailer in the country. AutoGeek's wholesale program serves accounts in over 30 countries and its retail sector ships worldwide. Go to AutoGeek.net for the best product selection on the internet today and their stellar technical support. AutoGeek.net. It's where I go for all my detailing needs. That's AutoGeek.net. If you're listening to this show, there's a pretty good chance you believe what I believe, that the collector car vehicles we love are more than just a means of getting from one place to another. They're part of our culture and our identity as a people, bringing us together at vintage races, classic car auctions, and thousand-mile rallies. That's why I support the RPM Foundation, which exists to ensure that the critical skills necessary to preserve and restore these important vehicles aren't lost to time. RPM stands for Restoration preservation, and mentorship. And their goal is to inspire the next generation of vehicle restoration professionals through its outreach programs, including Shop Hop, Off to the Races, the RPM Features, Class, and more. These programs encourage talented young people across the country and connect them with mentors and a variety of opportunities in the industry. For more information on how the RPM Foundation is driving the future of the collector car market and the skills trade, go to rpm.foundation today. So let's talk a little bit about a big challenge because being a guy who started up businesses and trying to make businesses go, no doubt you've met many challenges in your life. And the reason I ask this question is more about what was that valuable learning lesson? Even if it didn't work out, if it was a huge failure, you always learn something from this you can carry forward. Can you walk us through maybe one of those bumpy roads? Yeah. So listen, I've had uh, my fair share of, of adversity when it comes to businesses. I think, you know, someone told me I, I have big ambitions and I bite off more than one person can chew. And, <laughs> and that sometimes works out and it sometimes doesn't. And I've learned, you know, we, when we started Apex Motor Club, it started in a very different iteration. It was, uh, much more mild than it is today. And it's going to, it continues to evolve into something much greater than we ever had imagined it would be. And with all those ambitious initiatives, they come, the bigger the ambition, the harder it is to achieve. And, you know, we've been, I can't tell you how many times I've been told, no, I, 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 oh, this is a funny story. And Peter can talk about this. You know, we hosted the Ferrari Club of America annual retreat in November 2019, which was six months after we opened. And this had to be in the can about a year prior because of all the arrangements that had to be made and what, so on and so forth. And I remember bringing some of the representatives from the Ferrari Club down to this farmland and took them to the side of the road and said, I promise there'll be a racetrack here. Oh, my God. Well, I'm pretty sure half the guys turned, got in their car, drove and said, those, those guys are crazy. There's never going to be a racetrack, yeah. right? And I can't tell you how many people told me, no, you're never going to be a racetrack. And it is ambitious. And we stuck to our guns. We made commitments to people and, and that commitment and not only commitment to yourself, but a commitment to others that, that support you is important. And, you know, if you set out to do something, 
that passion and that desire is what fuels you. Sometimes I call everybody asks me like, well, how did you get, how did you get a racetrack? You know, I remember a guy who, who'd been in the motorsport industry for 25, 30 years. And he said, listen, you have a, you have your zoning. You're like 99% further than everybody that's ever tried to do a racetrack. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And you're right. And cause everybody's building a racetrack. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was fun to hear that and it's not easy. And I learned that tenacity and I, I, you know, I was going to tell you, I, Sometimes I'm powered by ignorance. Um, I'm a little bullheaded. <laughs> Sometimes that's in good. In that regard. <laughs> Sometimes it's good, right? So um, I just follow that passion and, and, and I try to see the vision at the end. And that's what um, inspires me to continue pressing forward. Yeah, well, again, my hat's off. I've, I've had plenty of people on this show and, and some who have successfully built racetracks. There's one being built right up north of me, about 15 minutes up the road. Uh, and uh, yeah, these are hard, hard things. And that zoning thing, that is the biggest one. That's the hurdle oh, yeah. to get oh, over. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing what you've done. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life because I have a suspicion you've had a few, but maybe one that stands out for you and maybe share a story about that ride. It's funny. So I told you I wanted to be a race car driver. Uh huh. Well, the first race car I owned was, is called the Radical. Um, oh, we're yeah. actually a I'm dealer familiar. for them. Yeah. It's, oh, the you're Radical, a dealer? Yeah, it's built in UK. We're a dealer for them for Arizona. Uh, it's built in England. For those that don't know what it is, it's, it's sort of a prototype chassis vehicle that has, uh, there's, there's five different models and it's the one I happen to race is the most popular. It uses a motorcycle, the Suzuki Hayabusa motorcycle engine, yeah. 1,300 pounds, 200 horsepower, um, and a really neat car, you know, two and a half lateral Gs on the racetrack. And that was my first race car, and that was September 2019. And I've gone on, not only do we race it at the Apex member race series, which we hold once a month from October to May, but Radical Cup, which has a U.S. Uh, tour, races seven, six to seven U.S. destinations, uh, you know, including Road America, Sebring, Laguna Seca, Circuit of the Americas, right? And so I participated last summer in my first official race uh, as, as an SCCA member. It's a sanctioned event under SCCA, and it was unbelievable. So oh, yeah. that car will always have a special place in my heart. I have owned lots, Ferraris and Porsches and hot rods and, and muscle cars and sports cars. And um, to me, my first race car is really something that – and I had to wait to my – early 40s to start this so <laughs> just to prove to people it's never too late <laughs> well yeah i've talked to some people from radical and learned more about those vehicles they're awesome i mean it's just a it's a very cool way to get into a proper styled race car that is supported uh versus vintage cars which are a little scary to you know break or or crash in much yeah, less they're, exactly you don't want to crash in a <laughs> in an old race car yeah we started selling these things in 2019 and in 2020 we were dealer of the year worldwide well congratulations. this year 20 sorry last year 2021 we were runner up wow so we're That's having incredible. a lot of fun we have over 50 of them at the track they're the product speaks for itself and they're a lot of fun oh yeah incredible cars okay i'm gonna be your car psychologist here today jason i'm gonna crawl into your skull a little bit which should be an interesting place to go. If you were a vehicle, you were actually manifest as a vehicle, what would you be and why? Well, I'm definitely going to be a sports car. I'm going to be naturally aspirated, high revving, lightweight, um, track, track ready. tilted. I want to, I <laughs> yeah. def, track ready. Yep. I definitely want a sports car that wants to go to the track for obvious reasons. And I think it's probably, I'm probably got a little bit of European in me somewhere, I think. Okay. So maybe we're talking like a GT3, GT3 RS Porsche? Oh, there you, yep, you, uh, you may have hit the, <laughs> the, the bell for sure. May have? That checks a lot of the, <laughs> that checks a lot of those boxes, Mark. Well, yeah, it does. I mean, you think about lots of great European sports cars that you could take to the track, but of course, Porsche, I, I really think they're kind of the king of that when it comes to street ready, track ready cars. Especially when you get into the GT series. They really are. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, children's again here because it's incredible cause that Peter and you as a uh, supporter of this event, Concord in the Hills, and so many others give end up giving them hundreds of thousands of dollars. I just wonder what that means to you in a benefactor type way, a, a supportive way for children's Phoenix. Well, there's lots of charities out there, right, that do incredible things. And obviously, the Phoenix Children's Hospital with 
what they do for children. If you have a child that's sick and you can take your child there and you can't afford, they, it is incredible what they do. They raise millions of dollars. There's a lot of donations that come in to support just local market um, children. And it's, it's an incredible cause. And I encourage somebody, especially locally, to go down to the Phoenix Children's Hospital, take a tour, see what they do. It pulls on, it tugs on the heartstrings in a way that is hard to even imagine. Yep. And it makes some of the stuff that we're talking about today seem incidental. But if we can turn this passion and lever uh, all these great people that, that support this cause for something bigger and more powerful, then it's, it's a really neat deal. It's awesome. And what Peter's done there, you know, when he was first on my show four or five years ago, they were raising tens of thousands. Now it's hundreds of thousands yeah. every year. It, it's really tremendous. Uh, you look at all the Concours events I've had on the show, and some of them, you know, are giving away, well, Pebble Beach, $2 million each year. I think they even got close to mm-hmm. that last year when there was no, uh, yep. or two years ago, no event due to COVID. So uh, lots of people in the automotive sector giving back and helping, which is absolutely tremendous. Is, is there a great book you'd like to share with our listeners you've enjoyed reading, you've learned a lot from or enjoyed it quite a bit? That's a great question. So I'm not a book guy. Okay. I think my um, the way my brain is wired, I need I need more stimulation than a book can give me. I, I also am ADD, by the way, in the interest of full disclosure. There you go. All right. <laughs> so that's one question I can't answer for you. I'll, I'll phrase it a different way. How about, I mean, do you like to subscribe to uh, any of the automotive magazines or uh, club magazines? Yes. Absolutely. You know, one of my favorites, and it's on my desk, is Racer Magazine. Oh, yeah. I'm staring at it right now. I got the newest issue. It's, in, in, you know, I, I love, as I've alluded to through this interview, I I love the, the motorsport hobby, and Racer is just an incredible book. Um, I really enjoy receiving it every month and, and reading and catching up on, on what's happened in motorsports. So that's probably my favorite. Uh, I do subscribe. I re- literally read every automotive blog every morning when I start my day and I sit <laughs> at my desk. The first thing I do is read automotive news. So I am always have the latest and greatest from an automotive perspective, whether it's in motorsports or product or it started. It started a long time ago, and I can't stop that train. Of course. Why bother? You know, another great alumni of yours now here on Cars Yeah is Paul Fanner, who's the founder, uh, president and CEO of Racer Media yep. and founded yep. Racer. Yep. He was on the show actually not too long ago. Had a great conversation awesome. with him. Yeah, which is cool. So you're in good company here on Cars Yeah. Now, I'm going to let you go on an ultimate drive before I let you go today. I have an open checkbook. I'm your benefactor. I'm going to provide you with any vehicle. You can be driving anywhere and with anybody, living or deceased. What does the ultimate drive look like for you today, Jason? Well, it's probably, yeah, that's a great question, Mark. Wow, <laughs> and one I've never thought of. Um, you know, like you want to say like, oh, the Nürburgring in a GT3, but that's not practical. Um, I think for me, it's got to be on a track. Okay. I got to be on a track and I would love to rate, I would love to a spa, I think, would probably be the track of my choice. And I need to be in something high revving and track oriented. And whether that's, you know, a GT3 or something I haven't even heard of, it's been, not been invented yet. So <laughs> um, it's, and it could be my, and it also could be my radical race car. So okay. um, I would enjoy a, a, a track drive. There are some incredible roads. I do think that the spirited driving should be safe for controlled and safe environments. I'm yes. not a big fan of going out there and lighting it up on public roads because that's there's a lot of variables that are out of your control. So I'm uh, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that, but that probably where I'd love to go. And you know what? Maybe Abu Dhabi too for the Formula 1 track. Yas Marin. That w- that would be cool too, but I'm going to I'm going to leave you at Spa. I think that's the place you got to Yeah, I think so. If I you could get so. in your radical and drive that and then maybe let me let me add something to this. Which Race car driver, would you like to have in your ear giving you some advice as you go around that track? Wow. Yeah. That's a great question. Gosh. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, I'm a big Formula One fan, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for the IndyCar guys. Mm-hmm. I think what they do with the product they have compared to Formula One. I'm a big fan of Alexander Rossi. He's, you know, I think he's got a tenor about him that's, uh, that, Incredible. He's raced Formula One. He's raced IndyCar. And I, you know, 
And you know, my good friend, Paul Tracy, he's not a bad guy either <laughs> no. to have in your ear. He's got a lot of experience. He's won more than most. And he really, he's, st- you know, he's a member at our track and he still comes down. He's got the track record at, you know, being retired for almost 15 years. So yeah. it's, yeah. uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. So. Yeah, that would be neat. Well, you're dropping some names here today because Alexander Rossi is another Cars yeah, alumni. He was a guest of mine, uh, back in 2019, I believe it was. So, uh, there you go. We're again, we're staying in good company. You know, you've taken us on a wonderful ride today and I really want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share apex with us and talk about Concord in the Hills. Before I let you go, is there maybe a success quote, a mantra, or some kind of inspirational saying you might want to share with our listeners today? It's, it's just so cliche, Mark, the fact that you asked me this, but I have one. Good. And it's, it, it, yeah, and I use it often. Okay. Um, and I, it's inspired me to do what I've done. It's inspired me to continue persevering through adversity. Um, dream big, and if you build it, they will come. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's very nice. Listeners, you can learn more about Apex by going to apexmotorclub.com. Uh, check out their website. It's very cool, by the way. And if you have the inclination to uh, be a part of this incredible group of people, uh, you know what? You can give Jason a call and talk to him and join and go out there and have some fun in the desert. Also, of course, you want to learn more about Concord in the Hills, just go to concordinthehills.org. Remember, this event's coming up pretty quick here. Saturday, February 12th in Fountain Hills, Arizona. Time to get away. Time to get back out and be around people and be around cars. My gosh, the last two years has been a challenge. So uh, maybe make your first Concord of the year at Concord in the Hills. Jason, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and your inspiration. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at Concord in the Hills. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to be in such good company on your show. It was (laughs) really a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Well, the pleasure is all mine. Can't wait to see you at Apex. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at CARS YEAH. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!